Before we get started, this is, what, what year are we, do we know? No, 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 no. How many years have been around? I, I, I figured out that we're in 2014. <laughs> You're not a president for nothing. Come on now. <laughs> How many, was it 2008? <laughs> we're trying to remember when we had the first graduation. <laughs> 2009, amen. We got somebody in here that knows what they're doing. She must have graduated from the university. Come on now. <laughs> God is so awesome. So this is, would be our fifth year. Five years. Oh, my goodness. God is doing some great things. We have students in 24 states and 18 countries around the world studying the Word of God. Amen? And getting their degrees. It's just absolutely amazing. You know, it, it, it thrills me because the Word of the Lord that came to me was use every form of media to get God's Word out around the world. And the university is one of those ways where you can study the Word and that Word changes your life. And you know, the degrees that the graduates are getting is wonderful that's all superb but the revelation knowledge of the word that they got during their studies man you, you can't put a price on that amen that will forever ever ever change their lives well we are excited graduates that you're here I know you've been waiting for this day for a long time and I know you're gonna put into practice all that you've learned today I want to take a few minutes, and uh, my wife, of course, is the vice president of the university. She's not here right now, but she sends her congratulations to all of you graduates. And um, I want to also introduce to you some of the uh, doctorate degrees that have been given to those that have studied at Wisdom University, written their papers, and uh, have attained that doctorate degree. We have several of them here. We have more than this, but these are the four I've invited to come and share a word with you you about the university and how it has changed their lives. Uh, let me see now. First of all, we have uh, Dr. Poncho. Would you stand up? Pastor and doctor, give him a big hand. And he's from uh, Fort Worth, Decatur, Texas. And uh, would you give Dr. Debbie a hand? Dr. Debbie Trail from Oklahoma City. Uh, doctor, 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 uh, yeah. <laughs> this is Dr. Eloise Smith from uh, Arlington, Texas. And our own in-house, Dr. Ray Wilson. Give him a big hand. I'm going to have each one of these come and share with you a little bit about uh, the university. They, they have a few things that they would like to share. Uh, I invite different uh, doctors from uh, graduating classes to come and share uh, uh, at graduation time. So uh, if you could all be seated, and I'm going to have Dr. Pancho, if you keep standing, sir, if you would come and share with us some words of wisdom. Yes, sir. Thank you, Doc. Uh, start with your first name. No, no, no. Francisco Javier Valenzuela Quinones. Now, if you can say that three times fast, you get the next degree. No, just kidding. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> welcome. Welcome, you all. Esteemed graduates, man, congratulations. You know, uh, this is very, uh, a big honor. And coming up here and being able to speak to you all and letting you know just what Wisdom University means to me. Uh, you know, in this world, by the grace of God through Jesus Christ, we've all been moved to a higher human plane of life. You know, higher than the, this of, the, of, of that of the world. And you know what? There are several people, there are a lot of people that, you know, prefer to live on that lower human plane. Well, you know what? I won't do it. I'm not going to do it. I didn't come to Wisdom Ministries or to enroll in uh, Wisdom University seeking the mediocre. I came here seeking the spirit of excellence. That excellence that told me that I must quit entertaining my flesh in worldly matters and start educating my spirit in Jesus' kingdom culture. This is where we're coming from. This, you know what? You have to value what you're going to receive here tonight. It's valuable to you. You know what? Without that value, you're not going to do anything with it. So value it. Look into the, what you're receiving to like Meditate on it. Because you know what? I was once a drunk. I was an alcoholic. I was a drug addict. I was a, one of the meanest men I ever met. I didn't even like myself. But through the Word of God, when I transformed, when the Word of God transformed me, when I left the world behind me and start renewing my mind, 
with the mighty word of God and no better place than Wisdom University to get the wisdom and knowledge of God. Now I pastor a church in Decatur, Texas. I have a wonderful church. My wife pastors it. She's in charge of praise and worship. Enhances the presence of God in that church. Man, I'm waiting for people to start falling out of chairs. I mean, there's such a movement of God's spirit in our church. And I used to be a drunk. This, I used to be a full-blown heathen. Well, not anymore. This, this opportunity that you all have now is knocking at your door. And, I dare, and I, I'm going to close with this. I dare say to you guys right now, you've been given this opportunity. It's being handed to you. And if you don't embrace it, if you do not, if you go home this weekend without enrolling into Wisdom University, I dare say this, that you're doing yourself harm. Amen. You're not doing yourself any good because you know what? You're letting Satan steal the mighty word of God from you, and it should not be that way. So you know what? If you want wisdom, enroll. If you want that knowledge that God will give you, enroll. Just get her done. Thank you. <laughs> You should have you, sh you wouldn't have recognized him. I met him when he was uh, the other way. <laughs> but this is a transformation. He doesn't look different, doesn't walk different, doesn't act different. And he said, I want to change with the word of God. And he came in and he studied. He got his bachelor's degree. He kept studying. I saw a transformation happening to him. He got his master's degree. Then he got his doctorate degree. Then he uh, 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 became a pastor, started a church. Uh, just incredible transformation. Dr. Pancho, we are so proud of you. Amen. Give Dr. Pancho another hand. Now I'm going to have Dr. Debbie Trail. Dr. Debbie, would you come up here and share some words of wisdom about, uh, or about you? what's happened with you with Wisdom University? Thank you, Dr. Siddiqui. Graduates, you're sitting here this evening in anticipation of being handed a piece of paper that announces that you have achieved a degree. I have four degrees from Wisdom University, associates, bachelors, masters, and doctorate. Although they hang proudly in my office over my desk, I don't use those certificates on a regular basis. However, Wisdom University does not only give out degrees, Wisdom University gives out keys. Keys that unlock doors of opportunity, doors of knowledge, doors of wisdom. You will use those keys every single day. I use mine as I manage our businesses, as I talk with the person doing my nails, as I preach, I teach and minister. When a person has just heard that they've been diagnosed with cancer, they don't care what certificates are hanging on your wall. They care about what key you can give them to unlock that healing. When a mother is holding her baby who has just died, she doesn't care what title you have or what letters are behind your name. She cares about what keys you can give her to unlock her confusion and her grief. Wisdom University provides those keys those keys you will use every day. You who are receiving your masters and doctorates, all those papers you have written, don't, don't put them on the shelf to collect dust. Those are sermons. Those are reference guides. They're books. I've already published a book based on one of my doctorate papers. I have another one in the process ready to be edited that was another paper. Wisdom University does not give you just a degree. Wisdom University provides you the tools to walk in the purpose and plan that the Lord has called you to. You may be sitting here waiting on a piece of paper confirming your degree, but through the work that you've done through Wisdom University, you've already been provided the keys you need to begin unlocking your path to fulfill your purpose in the kingdom of God. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and may his face shine upon you. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Steve, you got a preaching machine here. Did you know that? What a transformation. She's awesome. Give her another hand. That was great. <laughs> but let me tell you, she wasn't always like that. But she is now <laughs> with the knowledge she got from Wisdom University. And, and you know what? It's, like she mentioned, not just the degrees, but how she is changing her world. Amen? Changing her world through the Word of God. Uh, now we're going to have uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Eloise Smith, a medical doctor who uh, 
she kind of hesitated to get into the university, but pushing and screaming, we got her in there. <laughs> and uh, she said, but I'm already a doctor. Yeah, but you don't know the word, amen. And so she went and she took her doctorate degree at Wisdom University. And, you know, now her, her doctor's degree is, uh, in medicine is kind of secondary to what she does. She lays hands on people. She preaches them the word of God, gets people healed, delivered, set free. She does women's conferences. I mean, she is busy traveling because of the revelation of the word. Uh, Dr. Eloise, would you come and share with us? Amen. Thank you, Dr. Siddiqui. As a full-time anesthesiologist and a spirit-filled, born-again believer, I was seeking something when I met Dr. Siddiqui and uh, Sister Na uh, Anita, or Dr. Nasser Siddiqui and Dr. Anita Siddiqui. I was hungry for the Word of God or an understanding of the Word of God, and that's my why as why I came to Wisdom University. I knew I was a born-again believer, and I was practicing the, the definition of insanity. I was going to church every day, every, or not every day, but Sunday and after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, singing in the choir, leading praise and worship, but still, I was still hungry. There was something empty, even with the Bible study. There was a, I was a lacking in the wisdom and knowledge of God. I, I promised myself I wouldn't be one of God's children that was perishing for lack of knowledge, but I found myself that's what I was doing, and that's what a lot of Christians are doing day in and day out. But I'm so thankful, and congratulations to all of the graduates, that you've made a decision not to, to stop the madness. It's so awesome that many of us, we finally get off the roller coaster. I was also ordained as a minister with uh, Dr. Siddiqui and, and uh, Wisdom University. I, re I realized that there are multiple universities out there, even online, that I could go to as a full-time MD anesthesiologist. I'm extremely busy with a full-time practice, but I knew I needed the Word of God. My spirit needed to be fed the Word of God. So what I, I saw the advantage of Wisdom University. I knew the teachers of the Word here, therefore that was a plus. It was online, so it, it, it was accessible in my crazy schedule. And then the other thing, the blessing was that it's affordable for, those, for all of us that want to not spend a lot of money on education. It's quite affordable. Also, once I started the classes, you, there was a, um, an, an anointing in each lesson. Each lesson, you were on fire for God. I turned my car into my classroom, even driving to the hospital every day. My car was my classroom. Many days, my spirit was leaping to the point I'd have to stop the car. I was going, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And then I would hit rewind and then say that again. <laughs> it was so awesome. What the word of God does when you get the word of God, the unaltered word of God, and then you get it in your heart. I saw the, this word of God here at Wisdom University was fresh, it was concise, and it was absolutely presented with pinpoint laser precision. The Wisdom University offers a diverse array of uh, courses, and their course groups afford accredit accredited degrees in majors and minors. I received in 2013 my second doctorate degree in biblical wisdom and a minor in spirit, scriptural teaching and he, healing ministry. I, was, I um, in obtaining the second degree here at Wisdom University, as Dr. Nasser Siddiqui said, it seriously propelled me into ministry, into the knowledge of the word. It gave, I had a greater confidence in myself in presenting the word because nobody could tell me that I did not know the word. And that's, graduates, that's what you will see. You have something that no one can take from you. You have something that you haven't had in the past. And I implore you and encourage you, it doesn't stop here. It doesn't stop today just because, uh, as my colleague said, when you get the degree and it's on the wall, this is maybe your first, second, third, fourth degree, but it doesn't, this is a different degree. Treasure this because you're treasuring the word. You've hidden the word in your heart. Now you're obligated and encouraged and empowered to give the word, give what you have out. So that's the tremendous blessing that you have. 
And what this word did for me, which it will do for you, is allow you to fulfill your God-assigned destiny plan that he has to, for you, that now you know what it is because you have the word of God inside of you. And I believe every believer should become a student of the word of God. Every believer, not just these graduates, every believer, everyone on every seat, everyone in the sound of my voice, everyone in, on the internet, Everyone should become a student, and not just become a student, but stay a continuous student of the Word of God. It's, um, and by doing this, I encourage you to enroll in Wisdom University, and for the reasons that I had give, given already. And I can personally 100% guarantee you, with my money-back guarantee, that you, your spirit man will change your spirit man will grow exponentially to heights in Christ Jesus. Heights that you've never dreamed or imagined. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Eloise. Is she on fire for God or what? <laughs> See what happens when you know the word of God? See, there's something she said that was so critical. She said, now she can teach and preach the word with confidence, knowing fully well that she has rightly divided the word. That's why you see her traveling all over the country and doing conferences because they, they, you know, there's no shortage of ministers in America. There's a shortage of ministers that have something worthwhile to say. Have something worthwhile to say. And these people have something worthwhile to say. They know how to rightly divide the word, as do the graduates that are coming. Uh, now, uh, the last uh, person I'm going to invite up is uh, Dr. Ray Wilson. Uh, Dr. Ray Wilson, would you come on up here? He's part of our team. He's on staff here. And you have a tough act to follow because those ladies set a pace, and Dr. Poncho kicked it off now. So, so see what you can do, all right? Well, good evening, everybody. It's my privilege to, uh, to share God's word with you just briefly and then to introduce our students and graduates to you. Um, one of the things that I have uh, been blessed to learn as a student and also as an employee here is how to dream bigger. Uh, I can say that my dreams were smaller before I came, but my dreams are bigger now, and I expect them to continue to grow as well. Um, it's really interesting, I think, that you know, God loves the world so much that he wants to give. And God has three ways that he gives to the world. And he has three groups of people that he wants to give through. The first group he wants to give through to bless the world is the church. If the church doesn't listen, the church isn't diligent with what God wants to give, then he chooses the Jewish people because they're the natural seed of Abraham. We're the spiritual seed of Abraham, they're the natural seed. Then if the church doesn't follow him, follow his lead, then, and the Jewish people don't follow his lead, then he turns to the Gentiles. And that's why we have folks like Bill Gates in the world, because I believe God gave witty inventions, knowledge, discoveries, wonderful things, and he wanted to give it through the church to the world. Because God always wants to exalt the church. He wants to exalt his family, his children. But if his children are not diligent with that dream, then he'll give that dream to someone else. He'll give that dream then to the Jewish people. And if they don't follow that dream, if they don't deliver that package, if they don't want to be used and, and bless others, then he turns to the Gentiles. And I think it's a real shame that the church is the one he really wants to give through. He wants to give to us, but he wants to give through us. And so I want to encourage everyone here to seek God, find out what he wants to do through you, and then do that dream. Don't die with a dream. Do the dream. Amen? Amen. Well, I would like to uh, begin to introduce our students to you. We have uh, a number of graduates that are not able to join us this evening. We will be announcing their graduation as well, and I'm sure that most of them, or if not all of them, are wa watching on the Internet, and we want to uh, congratulate them as well. Uh, to begin with, we have uh, a lady who I have not met, but I'm sure she's watching. Her name is Miss June Hammer, and she is from the United Arab Emirate, 
and she will be graduating tonight with two degrees. Our first year degree is a diploma in biblical wisdom, and uh, she is our very, very first graduate this evening with that degree. And so we want to uh, uh, congratulate June, wherever you are this evening, congratulations on your graduation with your diploma of biblical wisdom. Our next student, yes, thank you. Our next student and our next graduate is Karen L. Valawenza, and I think she's rela is she related to you? Okay, she's, she's your wife. Okay, so his wife will be graduating, Venezuela, Karen. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad you didn't ask me to say your whole name, because your name is like, okay, I have to practice that. <laughs> Karen, if you could come on up. Karen is graduating with a diploma in biblical wisdom, and she is also graduating magna cum laude. Congratulations, Karen. Our highest level of honors is summa cum laude. That means with highest honors. Our next level of honors is magna cum laude, and that means high honors. And then cum laude means with honors. Our next graduate. Give her a big hand. Is Richard C. Dunn, the man who's not finished. Richard, come on up. Richard is graduating with a diploma in biblical wisdom, and he has reached the level of summa cum laude. Congratulations. Our next graduate is Arthur R. Bullis, and he's graduating with an associate's degree in biblical wisdom. Congratulations. Our next graduate, uh, this is June Hammer with the United Am Arab Emirate, and uh, she's also graduating this evening with an associate's degree in biblical wisdom. I'm sure she's watching on the internet. Let's give her a round of applause. Congratulations. Next we have Michael Hatch from Mississippi. Why don't you come on forward? And he's graduating with an associate's of biblical wisdom. Congratulations. Our next graduate is Stephen L. Jones from Indiana, and he's graduating with an Associate of Biblical Wisdom degree. Congratulations. And he's also graduate, graduating cum laude.
Congratulations. Our next graduate is Arthur R. Bullis, again with an advanced diploma. Come on, from Texas. From Texas. Next, we begin our bachelor's degree graduates, beginning with Gary L. Zanner, Jr. from Oklahoma. And Gary is graduating magna cum laude. Yes, sir. And he's graduating with a minor in biblical foundational studies. Congratulations. Our next graduate is not in attendance. It's Julia Elizabeth Palmer from Alabama. She's graduating with a Bachelor of Biblical Wisdom degree. Congratulations, Julia. God bless you. Our next graduate, Lauren Hopkins. Please come forward. He's from Ohio. He's graduating with a Bachelor of Biblical Wisdom with a minor in Biblical Foundation Studies. Congratulations. Our next graduate is Marlene A. Borozuski from Pennsylvania, and she's graduating with a Bachelor of Biblical Wisdom with a minor in Biblical Foundational Studies. And she's watching and joining us online. Congratulations. Our next graduate, Michelle Panic from Ohio. She's graduating with a Bachelor of Biblical Wisdom degree and she is minoring in Biblical Foundational Studies. Congratulations. Our next graduate with the same last name is Paul Panic from Ohio. He's graduating with a Bachelor's of Biblical Wisdom degree with a minor in Scriptural Confession Laws. Congratulations. Our next graduate, Richard A. Conklin of Ohio, is graduating with a Bachelor of Biblical Wisdom degree with a minor in Biblical Finances. Congratulations.
Our next graduate is joining us online, Shelley Lynn Crimmins of Indiana. She's graduating with a Bachelor of Biblical Wisdom, Kumalande with a minor in Biblical Foundational Studies. Congratulations, Shelley. Our next graduate, William B. Navarre of Louisiana, is graduating with a bachelor's degree in biblical wisdom. Congratulations, sir. Our next student is graduating with a master's degree in biblical wisdom. Jeffrey Swagger of Ohio, please come forward and congratulations. He's graduating with a minor in scriptural guidance. Our next student is not able to join us this evening, but I'm sure he's watching from California. Ambrose August is graduating with a Doctor of Biblical Wisdom. Congratulations, Ambrose. Congratulations. And now we have uh, a student who's been working very hard, diligently. Uh, I can say that he has uh, been doing a tremendous job with his papers, and he got his last paper rated right on the exact deadline. I was really proud of him. Uh, Herman Earl Ellis of Oklahoma, he's graduating with a doctoral degree, graduating summa cum laude with a minor in biblical leadership and scriptural prayer. Congratulations. Ellis, the first time, and from now on, Dr. Ellis, would you give him a big hand as he shares some words of wisdom for us? How long have you been waiting on this? If I tell you that, I have to tell you my age. I won't do that. <laughs> it's such a joy to be able to be here, but I have to watch because I can't say all I want to say, but... I'm just so grateful to know God and to know Him and to know his, his love in my life and to be able to put someone in my life that is able to demonstrate that love for me in the Lord. Not only in what He says, but in what He does. And it's one thing I learned a long time ago from a person that says, you can tell me what you believe, but when I can watch and see what you do, that's when I know who you are. And I thank you that I have the opportunity to be able to partake of who God is through who God has put in my life with Dr. Siddiqui. And I'm so grateful to be here and to a point that that which I had started and seemed like had dried up, the watering of the word came into my life and restored me, and I will never stop. Amen. Give him a big hand for you, my brother.
Congratulations, everyone. Well, Dr. Siddiqui, I'd like to present to you the Wisdom University Class of 2014. Give him a big hand. <laughs> you may be seated. I won't take long because we had many of our doctors already shared some wonderful word, uh, but there is a couple of things on my heart to share specifically with the graduates. Uh, it thrills my heart to see you sitting here, to see you stuck it out, to see that you didn't allow distractions, you didn't allow the busyness of the world to keep you away from your dream and your goal. I believe that the pathway to the piece of paper that you got, the degree you got, was just the beginning of what God is going to do in your life. You learned some things about studying. You learned some things about discipline. You learned some things about uh, prioritizing your time. You learned some things about putting God's Word first. You learned some things about the Word itself. And that's why you're sitting here today. But I believe those are lessons for the rest of your life. Whatever degree you've got, I encourage you, go to the next one. Continue studying the Word. The Bible says, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they shall be filled. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved. Go after the wisdom of the Word. Wonderful. You know, like they mentioned here, the dream with uh, Dr. Ray Wilson increased. I believe your dream is increasing. You wait to see when you come up here. Just like I remember Dr. Uh, Ellis, Dr. Ellis, sir. I remember Dr. Ellis when he came up here the first time. He said, I'm going to go for that doctorate degree. Well, you did it, sir. You did it. If I had a hat, I would take it off to you. You're awesome. Give him another big hand. Just like each one of these went after their goal and they accomplished it. Let this be a life lesson that if you set a goal for yourself, you can go after it. You have the ability. You can do it with Christ who strengthens you. Amen? And let this be just the beginning of all that God has prepared for you. Wisdom is the principal thing. And you get that from the Word of God. And all that you've learned through the lessons that you took, apply them, just like Dr. Debbie was talking about. The piece of paper is wonderful, but in real life, use that teaching, that word, that revelation to go change somebody's life. I believe this is just time of preparation for all the wonderful things that God has planned for each one of you. I believe this is the beginning of some great things. I believe you stepped on the ladder of success. Don't stop now. Keep going. God's got a great plan for your life, a plan to prosper you and not to harm you. The biggest obstacle the church needs to learn is that it's not for lack of money, power, or anointing that God's people perish. It's lack of knowledge. And you got a revelation of that, and you went after knowledge. And because you went after knowledge, you can now say, as one of the doctors, was, uh, uh, I think it was Dr. Uh, Eloise that was saying, you can preach the Word, you can declare the Word, you can teach the Word, and you know you're, what you're talking about because you've rightly divided the Word. You've studied, I love this, and you've showed God that you are approved. These have been days of preparation. Keep studying, keep preparing. But remember, when you prepare is when God opens opportunities. And I believe God's going to open some incredible, incredible opportunities for each and every one of you. Keep learning towards your next level of degree. Get your doctorate degree and then make a decision. You're going to sit up here with these guys. Amen? That's where you need to be, up here. You're doing great, but don't stop now. Now you need to use what you've learned to change the world. Become the son of God that you were meant to be. Become the king that he is the king of. Become the Lord that he is the Lord of. Fulfill God's plan for your life. Because ultimately, there's only one person who you need to stand before. It isn't me, 
and it isn't them. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. And you want him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've run your race. You've finished your course. That is the ultimate degree. And you are on the pathway to that degree right now. Would you please stand and come forward? Slide down a little bit. Thank you. That's it, that's it, that's it. Slide down. Slide down. There you go. Good. Keep sliding down. We got room for everybody. Slide down. Don't they look good? Turn around, face the people. Now, I want you to move your tassels. Because you're graduating tonight from the right side to the left side. Now give them a big hand. May I present to you the graduating class of Wisdom University 2014. Give them a big hand. Keep standing. I'm going to lead them out. We're going to take a couple of pictures. Uh, Ted is going to um, lead us in uh, some praise. And, or he might tell jokes. I don't know. He may even dance up here. I don't know. No, just kidding. Just kidding. And then uh, we will be right back. Uh, we're just going to take some pictures out there. And I've got a lot of teaching that I want to give you tonight. You don't want to miss what God's about to do. Just give us a few minutes for all of the graduates to take their gowns off. And they will come back in and join us. So um, if you will follow me and open me an uh, opening right here. I will just come through. We'll get that music playing. He's getting that thing lined up. Praise God. Dr. Siddiqui's son, Josiah, I've known Josiah since he's been, he wasn't even, you can, you can be seated real quickly. I'm going to have you stand in just a minute, but I've known him since he's been one. He was not even quite one years old when I first met Josiah. And uh, even when I first met him, he just had this way about him. He's very lighthearted and very humorous. And uh, he was, he graduated from Bishop Kelly High School um, I think last Saturday, and so I was at the graduation, and he, the student body, voted on the people that would speak to the graduating class, and Josiah was one of the people, he was the last speaker to speak, and uh, he started out in front of 3,000 people uh, uh, at University of Tulsa in their arena, and, you know, so it's, I don't know that he's ever spoken in front of that many people ever. He got up there just as natural, as cool, and as calm as he could be. And he greeted the graduating class and he said, Bishop Kelly, graduating class, 
all the priests were sitting on the stage. And they said, hold on just a minute, hold on, I gotta take this time. And he turned around and took a selfie so that he could break the ice. And then he did his speech. I'm gonna have you stand up with me. And we're gonna sing, uh, they're changing clothes, they're taking pictures, and they're uh, uh, taking pictures and getting out of their robes and stuff. And Dr. Siddiqui will be right back in. As they were speaking, I'm gonna be obedient, if that's okay. As they were speaking, as Dr. Siddiqui and they were coming across the stage and stuff, I just felt led, I kept hearing this, to encourage the people here to follow your dreams, that it's not too late, and that God is not finished with you. And I mean, I believe that it applies in my life as well. You know, he was speaking it to me, and then as he kept speaking it to me, I felt like he said, you need to speak it to the people because you may not have a gown on tonight. You may not have a hat. You may not have the diploma in your hand. But I believe that during this conference, God is going to be stirring you up. He's going to do something in your heart, and he wants you to follow after that dream. It may be different than these guys or these ladies. But I really believe he's stirring our hearts, and he wants you to get ready. Have an expectancy, because he's got plans some of you don't even know. And you're thinking, that's, yeah, that's for this guy or that guy or, you know, and the doctor or, or whoever. But I believe there's some people here that he's speaking to. Let's just raise our hands. We're going to lift up our hands and thank the Lord, and then we're going to just do a song called Give Thanks, something simple that everybody knows, because my keyboard player is in Texas. and that, I'm not sure how to get him here right now. So we're going to do it a cappella. But let's just raise our hands and thank him for the things that he's doing in our lives. Thank him for the things that he wants to do in our lives. Thank him for the things that he's about to do in our lives because he's moving. And let him, Father, we just honor you and we magnify you and we glorify you and we thank you, Father. We give you permission, sir, to stir our hearts and prepare our hearts for the things that you're preparing and have prepared for us. Father, we magnify you and we look to you so that everything we say, everything we do will give you glory and give you honor and give you praise and that we'll run the race that you've called us to run and we'll hear you say, well done. Father, we magnify you and we glorify you and we honor you and we bless you. And I and I'm just reminded that, you know, he does not just inhabit the praise of the worship leader. He does, but he inhabits the praise of his people. So as we sing this, let's just be thankful. And if you, maybe you're not on stage and you wish you would have been. But we can be, there's things that we can be thankful for, to him for in our lives. And just as we take the time before Dr. Stiki comes back up and teaches, I believe it'll help open our hearts to what God is wanting to do tonight. An expectancy. I believe there is an expectancy in the house tonight for you, not just for the person on your right or left. Oh, I believe he wants you to receive from him tonight. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks unto the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks unto the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor 
say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And I'll let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name, O oh Lord. You're worthy. You're worthy to be praised. We minister to you, O oh Lord, with expectant hearts. Our hearts are open, Lord, before you. Oh, we magnify your name. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Hallelujah, Father. We magnify you and we bless your holy name. You are so worthy, Lord. We exalt your precious name. And I thank you for your presence, Father God. I thank you that your word says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. I believe that there's liberty, Father God, for your people. I believe that there's liberty, Father God, as we minister to you and sing. And Father, most importantly, I believe there's liberty for you tonight. That you're going, you're having your way. Father, I say, have your way. You're so good, Lord. You're so good. Hallelujah. You are so good. I teach at Grace Church. That sounds really impressive. But I teach fourth and fifth graders. I'm not sure who's learning more, they or me. Sometimes I think I am. But what I like about the fourth and fifth graders is their little hearts, if you talk to them and minister to them, are wide open. They're not here, you know, I've been guilty of it too. I've done it before where I come and I, I'm looking the part, but I'm not come with an open heart. And you know, sometimes I believe as we open up our hearts, God will do open heart surgery. In those areas where we just need him to minister to us, sometimes it just starts as we minister to him. I'm sorry. I think Dr. Siddiqui's ready. So let's open our hearts and hear from Dr. Siddiqui, okay? God bless you. Lift your hands to heaven. Just close your eyes. Just lift your hands to heaven. Close your eyes. Just focus. I thank you, Lord, for all that you've done so far this evening. And yet, Lord, you have so much more for us. You have the word and the revelation thereof for us. I thank you for every graduate. I thank you, Lord, that every person that graduated will never be the same because of your word, because of your word that is sown in their hearts. I thank you, Lord. Have your way tonight. Holy Spirit, sir, you're the great teacher. Reveal the mysteries of your word. Change us with your word. Oh, Lord, we've come one way to this place, but we're going to leave this place changed. And for all that you're about to do, my Lord, we will always give to you the glory, give to you the honor, and give to you the praise. In the mighty, matchless name of Jesus, if you agree with that prayer, somebody shout amen. amen. You may be seated. Praise God forevermore. Well, I tell you what, did you enjoy the graduation? 
Oh, I'll tell you, the graduates are still out there beaming, just beaming. <laughs> Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. I'm going to be next. Come on now. If you're here, if you're here and uh, you have never, we've got seats for you right here. The swaggers, we've got seats right in the second row waiting on you. Come on in, grab a seat. If you're here and you never did get uh, our information on the university, we have a whole bunch of the ushers. Seven ushers have university flyers ready to hand out. Uh, if I could get one usher, that would be great. We've got the university flyers. <laughs> Amen. If you did not get one of our university flyers, lift up your hand nice and high. If you were excited about the university, you want some information on it, please, please lift up your hand. We want to give you that information. Pass that off to you right here in the front row. Amen. Uh, we have these flyers ready to give to anybody that uh, maybe did not get one of the flyers and you're interested in our university. That would be wonderful. We'd love to have you be part of it. God is so awesome. Didn't they look good in those gowns? Come on, I tell you what. I, if I could wear one of those all the time. No, just kidding. <laughs> Come on in, Dr. Eloise. Uh, we've, got, uh, we got, we've got seats somewhere in the front here. All right. We've got a seat in the third row. It's a seat in the third row, isn't it? Yeah, we've got seats in the... Th oh, yeah, you have to slide on down. I think uh, uh, Art Bullis, Brother Art is coming, so you may want to... You leave that space for art, but you, the rest of you can slide on down. Yeah, there you go. Come on down. There you go. Just slide on down. There. Come on, Art. You got your degree right there. You're holding that fast. Don't let that go now. Come on. <laughs> God is so awesome. Can we, can we give the graduates another big hand? <laughs> we got a cheering section back there. Come on. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, if you're here for the first time, you should have got a packet like this when you came in. The ushers have got extra packets, and the ushers will hand them out. If you did not get a packet like this, please lift up your hand nice and high. I see one hand. I see two hands. Please, please, ushers, keep an eye on me. I can give you instruction, but I need you to be paying attention. All right. And there's, I think, uh, next to Al Ravine. Al, why there's nobody sitting next to you? Did you have a shower today? No, just kidding. Come on, come on down here, my brother. We've got a seat right next to uh, Brother Al, Magic Al. We've got right there. We call him Magic Al because he does all kinds of incredible magic tricks. Amen. Slide on down there. We've got space for you down there, my brother. There's always space for people hungry for the Word of God. Let me share with you, those of you that live in this area, uh, uh, we have what's called a prayer meeting coming up on Friday, June the 6th. You're all invited. It's in this packet. If you're in the area and you can come and join us or in Claremore or, or wherever you are in Oklahoma, come join us. We will be praying a Friday night right in here uh, for uh, the last six months of 2014 for divine appointments and open doors. How many of you want to have some divine appointments and open doors? And those of you that can't be here, we're going to live stream it. So wherever you are in, in Arizona, you'll be able to turn on your computer and you'll be part of the prayer team. Amen? And the prayer meeting is going on here. So uh, make sure you mark that in your calendar. That's in there. Our next conference, you definitely want to come if you enjoyed tonight's teaching. September the 4th to the 6th, uh, we did that uh, early just for someone who is praying <laughs> so, uh, so he can be here. So mark that in your calendar. And uh, if you go to the back of this, you'll see that there are uh, meetings coming up. I'm going to be in uh, Castle Rock, Colorado on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. All right. Where's uh, Pastor Pancho? Where's is Dr. Pancho? You have a space for your wife there? She's coming. She's coming, right? They go around that way, sweetie. All right. And then I will be in Aberdeen, Maryland, uh, June the 9th through 11th, and then June 15th to 17th uh, in Canada, and then in August uh, I'll also be in Canada. You can follow me on Twitter. Turn to your neighbor and say, he tweets. I'm a tweeter. Come on now. <laughs> So you can follow me on Twitter, and uh, I, I tweet a wisdom nugget every day on that one, and, of course, Facebook. So get a hold of some of these materials. They will bless you. Also, if you've got a book on the inside of you, uh, fill out this form and drop it uh, to uh, the tape table because we are, we've launched Wisdom Publishing, and we're helping people get their uh, 
uh, their books published. Now we've got people watching on the internet. Are we live on the internet? Somebody wave to me. Yes, we are. We've got people watching in uh, Alabama, Arkansas, Arizona, California, Colorado, uh, D.C., Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Kentucky. Uh, we've got people watching in, La in uh, Louisiana, Maryland, in Missouri, Mississippi, Nevada, New York, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas. We've got people watching right now in India. We've got people watching in Luxembourg. We've got people watching in the United Kingdom, in St. Lucia. We've got people watching all over Africa. We've got people watching in Pakistan. We've got people watching in England. Give all of our internet audience a big hand. I tell you, God is touching the world from a little place called Tulsa, Oklahoma. Amen. God is so awesome. Uh, let me share with you that we have, if you enjoy the teaching, we've got uh, many new products here. Uh, I didn't put these out before. This is how to develop your spiritual senses. You have five physical senses. You can see, you can smell, you can feel, you can taste, you can touch. But did you know you have five spiritual senses? You've got to be able to see in the Spirit. You've got to be able to hear in the Spirit. Uh, the, the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Well, you know that's not your natural taste. So don't arrive in heaven as a spiritual baby. Amen? Develop your spiritual senses. This is a brand new series. We just did a, a brand new one also on the gateway to grace. How do you see grace manifest in your life? These are all brand new. And uh, in February, we did one called The Fresh Start. It is our next marriage conference. I encourage you to get that. And all of these are on sale over at the tape table. Turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor! Rich people, Rich people educate themselves. Educate Poor people, people entertain themselves. Entertain. Which one are you? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Our latest TV program, which of course is Winning with Wisdom Interactive. Uh, you can go to our website, find out about that. We literally take questions live uh, uh, on Facebook, on Twitter, on a phone call. Uh, 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 they email it in, and we start answering questions of the Word of God. Amen? Uh, how to live based on the Word of God. Tomorrow night, we're going to lay hands on people. Uh, we're going to release gifts and anointings. How many of you want to get some gifts and anointings from God? All right, you don't want to miss tomorrow night. Uh, if there is a testimony you have on how this ministry has blessed you in any way, shape, or form, financial or healing or anything, uh, just go see one of the camera people. We want to put you on the air. We're going to be filming you. Uh, today, we had a meeting. How many of you were here at the morning meeting? We had a bunch. All right. We handed out the Elite Team. They even changed the name now. They call it Elite Team 300. Somebody did that, which is awesome. I only said it this morning. They're, these guys, are, my staff are awesome. If you, uh, 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 if you are part of our spiritual son, you're part of our mentoring program, you're part of our family, and you were not here this morning, if you are part of our family and you were not here this morning, you wouldn't have got one of these forms. Uh, if that's you, lift up your hand nice and high. We'll hand the forms out quickly, quickly, quickly. Ushers on both sides of the room, you can go ahead and do this. Come on. Praise God. One in the front, one in the back. Let's get this, this thing going. And uh, those of you that were here, I definitely need you to fill it out and uh, 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 drop it into the book table over there. We've got to have it back before I can pray for your vision. Uh, there's a gentleman right over here that's still waiting. Another one in the second row, still waiting. Right in front of you, there's a lady right there. Uh, you got these this morning. Oh, you need another one over here? You had too much to say. All right. <laughs> yeah, we, we're not publishing the book with it. <laughs> All right. And so please, 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 we're, we're developing what I call an Elite Team 300. If you did not get one of these, uh, uh, please lift up your hand. We want to make sure you get one. And this answers, asks you a whole bunch of questions, and we want to know what your gifts and vision is, the plan for your ministry, the plan for your business in five years. We need to know that so we can start pray effectively. Amen? So make sure you do that. You say, but Brother Nasa, I don't even know what a spiritual son is. These are ministers and business people that uh, we are mentoring and teaching the Word of God. If you're here today and you want information on our, uh, on our mentorship program, we have packets like this that we want to hand to you. If uh, you're interested in our mentorship program, lift up your hand nice and high. If you're not part of it, we'll be happy to give you one of our packets. All right, we've got a gentleman right over there. All right, please make sure you get that and uh, pray about it and then come
come let us know. Amen. Uh, we are going to the Holy Land. Uh, every year I've taken our pastors and ministers to the Holy Land. It may be the last trip, so you got to make sure you're going. All of our spiritual sons, less than 2% of all pastors in the entire world have ever walked where Jesus walked. And when you do, the Bible comes alive. Like, am I, am I telling the truth? You talk to Vicki. She came with me with her husband. Uh, the Bible has never been the same. Dr. Eloise came twice. Amen. She's ready for the third one. I know. <laughs> So this may be the last time I may be going, uh, but uh, I encourage you, if you, if you ever had a, 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 a bucket list, and that was that one day I want to walk where Jesus walked, then you make sure you come with us, because these people that came with me, how many of you have been there before? Doctor, lift up your hand, all of you that have been there before, uh, you talk to these guys, Dr. Charles. I keep calling him wanting to call Dr. Charles England. You, you got to be up here, Dr. Charles. Amen. Do you talk to any of these people? They'll tell you their lives were never the same. They never read the Bible the same. They never preached the same. Their ministries exploded when we came back from the Holy Land. Amen. Now, we've got a, 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 a form out there, a, a sign-in sheet. Uh, go to the table out there afterwards and sign up for it, and we'll send you information. It won't be this year. It'll be next year that we'll be doing that. Uh, of course, also sign up for the university. If you are, if you enjoyed this teaching uh, and you enjoyed what happened here, you got to make a decision that you got to be on this platform next year. Amen. Whether it's for your associates or your bachelors or your masters or your doctorate degrees, uh, just sign up and start studying for the Word of God. All of those that graduated here will tell you the degree was wonderful, but what they learned in the Word of God was much more wonderful. Amen. It will forever transform your life. So go to the university uh, table out there and uh, get information on it. I want to get into the Word of God because I have a lot to share. And uh, we took a little bit longer than I anticipated for the graduation, but the graduation was good. Amen. Uh, I want to pick up where we left off. Uh, first of all, let me tell you, for those of you, uh, my spiritual family that was not here last night, I believe this is one of the, the major final teachings that are coming before the coming of Christ. And so it's important that we get a hold of this, and it's important that we live this. We, we see this manifest in our lives. Um, we're talking about the kingdom process. Uh, come with me. We're going to go through some scriptures uh, quickly as a recap, and then we'll pick up from where we left off yesterday. Come with me to uh, John chapter 8, verse 25. Uh, you say you're talking real fast. I know. You can order the CDs, and uh, we will make sure that you get. If you enjoy the teaching, by the way, if you enjoy the teaching, some of it is already in this series, How to Multiply the Fishes and the Loaves. So I encourage you to get it. We answered a really important question yesterday, and the question was, who are you anyway? Who are you anyway? So here we pick up in John chapter 8. And we are in verse 25, John 8, 25. Uh, then they said to him, who are you anyway? That's where I got the title from. Who are you anyway? And Jesus replied, why do I even speak to you? I'm exactly what I've been telling you from the first. Verse 26, I have much to say about you, to judge you and condemn you, but he who sent me is true, and I tell the world only the things that I've heard from him. Say this after me. Jesus only spoke what he heard from the Father. Now, verse 27, they didn't perceive and understand what he was speaking to them about the Father. So Jesus added, verse 28, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, uh -huh, you will realize that I am he whom you look, and I do nothing. Everybody shout, nothing. I do nothing of myself, of my own accord, but I say, everybody shout, say. I say only or exactly what my Father has taught me. So, my brothers and sisters, every time you read a, a red letter Bible and you read those red letters and you think that's Jesus talking, that is not Jesus talking. That is the Father talking and Jesus repeating. Now, when you read that same Bible, it'll come alive in a different way. Come with me to John 14, verse 1. John 14, verse 1. This is the Father himself talking to you and I. What does he say? John 14, we're going to pick it up in verse 1. Uh, do not, are you there? Say amen. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Uh-huh. Uh, you believe and trust and rely on God. Believe and trust and rely on me also. 
Verse 2, for in my father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I'm going away to prepare a place for you. We found out as we studied this, he's not talking about a building. The church has turned this into a four-bedroom, three-and-a-half bath bungalow. It's not that at all. He's preparing a place in the body of Christ. We went through that Hebrew word yesterday. You found out it's a place, a spot for you in the body of Christ. That's where he went to go. And he came back, and then he says, and uh, uh, if, if I go and make ready, verse 3, a place for you, I will come back again, and I will take you to myself. He did that. He came back. He walked the earth for 40 days, and then he took them to himself. How do you know? Because we are now the body of Christ. Amen? Uh, uh, Jesus walked the earth in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He was the head and the body. Today, Jesus is still walking the earth. The difference is he's the head, and you and I are the body. All right? Now we go on to um, verse 4. And to the place where I'm going, you know the way. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't even know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There's the Father, there's Jesus, and there's you and I. We have to go through Jesus to get to the Father. And we are connected to Jesus. Verse 7, uh, if you had known me, uh, you would have also known my Father. Uh, from now on, you know him and have seen him. And Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. Then we shall be satisfied. And Jesus replied, verse 9, Have I been with you all for so long that you do not recognize and know me? Yet, Philip, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Then how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? What I'm telling you, I do not say of my own authority, of my own accord, but the Father who continually in me does his works. Now, the Amplified Bible says, his own miracles and deeds of power. Jesus never did any miracles in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He spoke what the Father said. And the Father did the miracles. The Father did the works. The Father multiplied the fishes and the loaves. The Father rebuked the storm. The Father is the, the healed, the sick, and the lame, and the, the blind, and the deaf. The Father raised the dead. All Jesus did was, I say what you tell me to say. And the Father did the works. Now, this is the final uh, uh, revelation that we need to get. Why? Because... If you read the next one, verse 11, believe me that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe me for the sake of the very works themselves. If you cannot trust me, at least let the works that I do in my Father's name convince you. So what was he saying? I live in the Father, the Father lives in me, I say only what the Father tells me to say, and the Father does the works, and if you don't believe me, look at the works. See, when we live in Jesus, and Jesus lives in us, and we only say what he tells us to say, there will be works. There will be signs, wonders, and miracles. And when you say, David, don't you know? When you see me, you see the Father. David says, well, I don't know about that. Well, if you don't believe me, at least believe the works that follow me. This ought to be where every one of us live. There ought to be works following you and me. My brothers and sisters, when Jesus comes to live in you, guess what? He's your Savior. But the day you make a decision to live in Him, to walk in Him, have your being in Him, to move in Him, He becomes your Lord. And many, many Christians call him Lord. And the problem is they don't even know what a Lord is because they've never seen a Lord. They've never seen anyone under a Lord. They don't know how to interact because they've never seen an example. How does somebody interact with a Lord? Jesus said it this way in Luke 6, 46. He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? So if we're going to call Jesus Lord, we have to say what he tells us to say. We have to do what he tells us to do. Amen? All right. So now, why is this so important? Because, verse 12, 
What are the first words in verse, verse 12? Verily, <laughs> verily, verily, not just one verily, two verilies. All the letters, the red letters are of course the Father talking, they're all important, but this one is extra, extra important. Why? It is red, it's important. It is red and verily, it is very important. Uh-oh, it is red, verily, and verily again. Everybody shout, really important. The Father said these words. Jesus just mouthed them. The Father was the one that said it. Uh-huh. Uh, verily, verily, I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, if anyone believes in me, everybody shout, that's me. He will himself be able to do the things that I do, and he will do even greater things than these. Why? Because I go to the Father. Now, did Jesus lie? No. So, so if he could raise the dead, you can raise the dead. If he could walk on water, come on now, you can step out on that pool now, come on. If he could multiply the fishes and the loaves, you can multiply the fish. Jesus wasn't lying here. He was telling the truth. And if he can do it, turn to your neighbor and say, you can do it. But the problem is we've never stepped out in it. Why? Because we've never learned how he did it. How did he do it? He said only ha, what the Father told him to say. So every time you see those red letters, it's the Father speaking. Remember this statement. Every time the Father seeks, speaks, something is created or something is changed. That's why you've got to listen and wait on the Father. Something is created or something is changed. Can we do that? Yes, absolutely. In Ephesians 5.30, it says we are members of his body. We are his flesh. We are his bones. So we've traded our body, we've traded our flesh for his flesh. You know, we're part of his body. Ephesians 2.10 says that uh, uh, he, we are his workmanship. He has created or recreated us in Christ Jesus. Uh, uh, in, uh, well, let's go over to 2 Corinthians 5.17. This is really important. 2 Corinthians 5.17. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, you need to see this. Paul writes an incredible statement here. And he says, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, he says this. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if any person is where... In Christ, when you gave your life to Christ, He took you, He recreated you, and He put you in His body. You become a member of His body. And the Bible says in the Corinthian letter, as the Father saw fit, He put you in the body of Christ. For we are the body of Christ. Now it says, therefore, if any person is where? In Christ. Uh huh. He is a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. What did we learn here? The word creation is the Greek word that means a species that never before existed. You've become a species that never before existed. That's why old things have passed away. That's why there can't be any generational curses. Why? Because you've become a species that has no past. All things have become new. Be very, very careful when you go see the doctor because the doctor is going to ask you questions like, is there a history of heart attack in your family? Is there a history of cancer in your family? Everybody shout, no! no. But you don't know my father, my grandfather. Don't matter. You become a species that never existed. Don't you acknowledge any of that. That old man, remember the one that died when you gave your life to Christ? He had cancer in his family, but you don't. You don't have that. My natural father died of his fourth heart attack. The doctor asked me, you got any history of heart attacks in your family? I said, no, not at all. Are you kidding me? I'm a species that didn't exist before. What happened? I shared with you, and I'm going to just lift this up and show you the four hierarchies. The four hierarchies that I shared last night. Number one hierarchy, the pre-Adamic age, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and archangels, and angels, and life. Then what happened? Then God created man. Uh-huh. And there was the same Father, Son, Holy Ghost, archangels, angels, and life, but God made man. Man was God's creation that was a spirit being totally wrapped in a physical body. 
And he gave man the ability to create just like God. That's why the angel said, what is man? What is man? That God has put him just a little lower than himself. And he had the whole planet to rule and reign. And what happened? He disobeyed God. And what happened? He fell all the way from this position above the archangels down here below the angels. That's why it says in the book of Hebrews, for a short period of time, God put man a little lower than the angels. Why? Because he sinned. He disobeyed God. That's what the Greek word, the uh, Hebrew word sin means. Disobedience of a divine command. And because of that, he fell down here. Release the curse. But you are God's greatest prized creation. He loves you. He wants to bring you back. So what did he do? He sent Jesus. Jesus left heaven, came to earth as a man with blood that was uncontaminated. That's why he didn't have the blood of Joseph. He had pure blood. And he took it to the mercy seat, paid the price for the sins of all mankind, for every single one of us. And then what did he do? He took you. He said, I'm coming to take you to myself. But where did he go? He went to be seated at the right hand of the Father. So where did he take you? Not back here. Because if he had taken you back to this position where Adam was, you would have been a species that existed before. So now you've become a species that never existed. He took you all the way to the Godhead. What? The Godhead? Yep. You are his body. You are his flesh. You have his mind. You have his blood. Uh, you are joint heirs with him. You are seated with him in heavenly places. You are in the holy of holies. You are in the throne room. You have joined the Godhead. Get a hold of who you are. You have become a spirit being that can do all things through Christ. You're not, uh, 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 you're not Spider-Man. You're better than Spider-Man. You're better than Superman. You're better than Batman. You're even better than Iron Man. You are Spirit Man. <laughs> Learn who you are. Learn what you can do. Find your place. Uh, and to make sure you never forget this, never, never, never forget this, uh -huh, my good friend, Rich Conklin, made a shirt for us. <laughs> and look at what it says here. Everybody shout, Spirit Man. See, see, a, a Spider-Man, Superman has got to do something. We just have to say a word. You just got to say a word, and they get healed. You just got to say a word, and the storm is rebuked. You just got to say a word. Get a hold of who you are. And, of course, uh, uh, this is his idea. This is what he put. Where, where are you, uh, uh, Richard? He's right here. Look at what he put on the back. So that every time you're walking around, people are going to call you What? favored one. Amen. Turn around and say, you can call me that all day. <laughs> we live in a voice activated system. So he brought them here and we have them on sale over there for $10. Tomorrow morning, all the spiritual sons are going to have their t-shirts on. Amen. So make sure you get your t-shirt tonight before we run out. We're going to have a group picture of all the favored ones. Amen. <laughs> Tomorrow we're going to face them and then we're all going to turn back like this. <laughs> get ready for what the Lord is about. Oh, Pastor Lee's going to get his shirt right now. <laughs> he doesn't want to run out. God is so awesome. Get to know who you are, my brothers and sisters. You are a super being, not a human being. Don't ever, ever, ever use the term, I'm just human. Don't ever use that again. That is not you. No, no. Uh, uh, he's given up his flesh and his bones to you. And his flesh, everybody shout, I got his flesh. You've got his mind and you've got his flesh. And I got news for you, his flesh don't take on sickness. That's why sickness is illegal in your body. Sickness ever tries to come on you, you just say, get off of me. You have no legal right. Why? I have the flesh of Jesus. I have the body of Jesus. I have the mind of Christ. That's why all timers can never come on you. My brothers and sisters, uh, uh, listen carefully. You've been made the righteousness of God. You have been given uh, the right to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. You are equal to Jesus with all of his rights belong to you. Uh, uh, anything that happened to him, he did it for you. He got raised from the dead. You got raised from the dead. He sits at the right hand of the Father. You sit at the right hand of the Father on the throne room of grace. 
We have been raised up to sit with him in heavenly places. This means you're already there. You have already died and you've already gone to heaven. What does that mean? Ha, death has no sting. Why? I already got me a place in heaven. I, I'm already there. Amen? Death can't touch me. Satan can't touch you anymore. My brothers and sisters, get a hold of this. In uh, Corinthians, don't go over there. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, it says, What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which you have, uh, uh, which you have of God, and you are not your own? Turn to your neighbor and say, You don't belong to you. Uh-uh, you are not your own. Verse 20 says, For you were bought with a price. Uh -huh. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Uh, go with me to 1 John 4.17. 1 John 4.17. This teaching is not for the faint-hearted. This teaching is not for new Christians. This is for Christians that are mature, ready for the Word of God. In 1 John 4.17, uh, look at what it says. In this union and communion of love is brought to completion and attains perfection with us that we may have confidence for the day of judgment uh -huh, and boldness to face him. Why? Because as he is, so are we. I didn't write it. The Holy Ghost wrote it. So as Jesus is, so are you in this world. Everybody shout, he's strong, I'm strong. I get a hold of this. You are exactly as he is. And the Bible says in John 16, that he has overcome the world. John 16, 33, let me go over there real quick. John 16, 33, he has overcome the world. I have told you these things so that in me, in Christ, you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world, you have tribulation and trials. Uh huh. Be confident, for I have overcome the world. Uh huh. I have deprived of his power to harm you. Everybody shout, he's overcome the world. So I've overcome the world. That means... Death has no sting, no power. He's overcome the, the power of death. Can't touch you. Everybody shout, can't touch me. Uh-uh, no more. Philippians 2, 9 to 11 says, Wherefore God hath highly exalted Jesus and given him his name, which is above every name. The Father gave the name to Jesus. And the Bible says in verse 10 that in the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of the things in heaven and the things on the earth and the things even under the earth. And every tongue shall confess, Jesus Christ is Lord. So what happened? The Father gave Jesus his name, the Father's name. And if you go to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 and 15, it says, For this cause I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Your middle name is Jesus. You better know that. You better walk in that authority. You see, uh, 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 when uh, 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 Pastor Paul uh, married uh, uh, Michelle, she gave up her name. Now, she's a panic. She got his name. And every right that that name has for Pastor Paul panic, she has, because she's a panic now. Every name and every right that Jesus had with that name, you now have, because you've got his DNA. He was the Word made flesh, and you are made from an incorruptible seed of the Word of God. You've got that Word in you. You have that name in you. So you can call me Dr. Nasser Jesus Siddiqui. Once you know you have that name, that's why you can boldly say, Satan, you know Jesus, you know Paul, and guess what? You know me. Don't mess with me. I'm going to make your life really miserable if you mess with me. Get to know who you are. Don't just use the name once in a while thinking maybe it might work, maybe it won't. No, no. It's your name. And when you walk in that authority, when you come walking down the street, he sees Jesus walking down the street. 
Because you have his mind, you have his DNA, you have his body, you have his flesh. You are the body of Christ walking on planet earth today. And you have every authority and every power that he had to use that name. And if you will do it, he will manifest. He will manifest. That's why we don't allow the spirit of fear. Uh-uh. God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and what? A sound mind. We operate with no more fear. Everybody shout, no more more fear. All right, now, let's get into some deep stuff. Everybody shout, the process. The process. Write it down. We're going to hit the process. Come with me to uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. So how do I do the works of Jesus? Here it comes. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. I want you to see this. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. Once you've found it, please say Amen. One person has found it. All right. <laughs> okay, good. My son, attend to my words. Consent, submit to my sayings. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. For they are life to those who find them. Healing and health to all their flesh. Let's break that down. Proverbs 4.20 Attend to my words. If I attend to God's words, if I l not let them depart from my sight, if I keep them in the center of my heart, God's word will bring life to those who find them and bring health to your flesh. What will bring health to my flesh? God's word. What will bring life? God's word. This, what I'm sharing with you in these three verses is called the kingdom process. A law is something that works Every time it is put to work, uh, you can calculate the results when you know the elements of the law. Over the years, man has been studying and sought God, and other men have studied and sought natural world of science and so forth. They were looking for elements of those laws that would produce the desired result, the predictable result every time. That is called a process. These three verses will produce a predictable result every time. It is a process. Can't change it. It's a process. When you put two elements together, uh, uh, it causes a reaction or something else to happen that was not happening until you put those two elements together. That process, step one and step two, and we'll get the desired result. If I want the desired result in the third verse, I have to do verse one and verse two. It is a process. Do verse 20, do verse 21, and you will see the result of verse 23. You can't, verse 22, you can't stop it. It is a process. Airplanes all function on the same basic process of lift. Uh, when those elements are put into operation, they need two, two elements, thrust and lift. When you get thrust and lift, a very heavy metal plane gets up in the air. <laughs> Don't make any sense. How can that plane get up there? Because it was a process. Uh -huh. Lift alone won't get it up there. Thrust alone won't get it up there. But if you take thrust and lift and put that process together, you can take a very heavy plane and put it 30,000 30, feet in the air. Why? It's a process. If we will learn the process, we will see the miracles of Jesus every single time. The kingdom of God functions by spiritual laws. And these laws produce and function in a process. And if you understand the process, apply those laws, and that process will work every time. Healing. We've got, a, we've got a doctor here in the front row. Or we've got a doctor here in the second row. Let me tell you about third row. Healing. Broken bone. You can set a bone. Yep. And over a period of weeks, the healing process will take place. 
When you pray and the anointing of God is applied to that bone, the process is the same. The healing process doesn't change. It just happens in four minutes. Hallelujah. It happens in four seconds. What happens? The bone still mends, but it does it in four seconds. It's a process. You've speeded up the process with the Word of God. The healing process doesn't change, but it happens in four minutes or four seconds instead of four weeks. The process is the same. God created the bone. It's His anointing, and all physical, natural processes are subordinate to spiritual processes. So if you add the spiritual anointing to that process, it speeds up the healing. Uh, what does it say? Uh, 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 ask, and you will what? Ask, and you will what? See. Ask, and you will what? See. See, it's a process. Why don't God ever bless me? You didn't ask. God loves you, but he can't bless you till you. You have not because you. It's a process. You do the asking, he going to do the answering. But if you don't want to ask, oh, come on now. You violated the process. The process works every single time. Seek and you will. See, if I don't want to seek, you ain't never going to find. Not God's fault. Don't blame Jesus. Got nothing to do with Jesus. You never went seeking, so you never did find anything. Huh. Knock and the door will be. Come on now. I don't want to knock. Then, then stay behind the closed door. <laughs> don't get mad at God. <laughs> it's not God's fault you broke. Got nothing to do with God. You didn't do the knocking. He didn't do the opening. You didn't do the seeking. You'll never do the finding. You didn't do the asking. Oh, Lord, come on now. Right. It's a process. When you learn this process, it will work every single time. It says in James, those of you that lack wisdom, let him ask the giving God, for he gives liberally. Does he give wisdom to everybody? No. He gives wisdom to those who ask. Amen. What if I never ask? You ain't going to get none. Why? It is a process. Oh, uh, you getting a hold of this? So we're going to learn this process. We're going to spend some time tonight, tomorrow morning, and tomorrow night learning this process. But we have to, watch this now. In the same, in, 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 in James it says, but you have to ask in faith. Why? This isn't a lottery. This is not a roulette. You know, your number may come up, may not come up. No, 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 no. If you ask, it ain't never going to come if you don't ask in faith. Why? Asking and faith brings results. Why? It is a process. Amen? I got to ask, but I got to ask in faith. Why? I'm operating under God's process. Hmm. All right? God is not picky. That's just the way the system works. No asking, no faith, no results. It's that simple. All right? Um, uh, 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 <laughs> Thomas Edison had to find the process that would turn the light on. It's a process. The kingdom of God process. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How do you get God's will on earth? Learn the process. That's what we're going to learn. The process that brings God's kingdom to the earth. The closer you adhere to the process, the more efficient and proficient we are at bringing thy kingdom to the earth. As it is in heaven. The plan to be done. Your plan to be done on earth as it is in heaven. He has a plan. The plan. For you and me. But we've got to find the process to manifest it. Uh-huh. Attend. Proverbs 4.20. Attend to my words. Attend. Everybody shout, attend. 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 What does the word attend mean? Let me give you a definition. <laughs> Make it your first priority. Attend to my word. Make it a first priority in your life. 
In other words, it's more important than anything else in your life. If you won't attend to the Word, you already failed the first part of the process. Attend to my Word. I, I was in a church one time. It, it was in Detroit, a big church in Detroit. You probably all know it. How many of you heard of Bishop Keith Butler? Bishop Butler. Big, big church. 22,000 member church in Detroit. I'm preaching the Sunday morning, and uh, uh, right after I finished preaching, uh, this guy who was my armor bearer assigned to me took me into the green room. The green room is where the guests are, and they, they got some refreshments to eat and drink, and I'm, I'm sitting in the green room, but this is just me and this guy in the green room. And I'm thinking, I don't want to be here. Uh, I actually want to hang out by my tape table. I want to hug some necks, shake some hands, sign some books. So I said to my armor bearer, let's go over to the tape table. He said, are you sure there's going to be a lot of people? I said, yeah, that's why I want to go over there. So he walked over to the tape table, and I'm over now on the other side of the building, and I'm hugging necks and signing books and shaking hands, and the armor bearer slips back and stands by the wall. You don't even know he's there, but he's standing by the wall. He never took his eyes off me for one second. This lady comes up, and she asked me, by the table, would you pray for my back? I got a pain in my back. So I said, of course. I don't mind praying for anybody. So as I, she lifts her hands, and I go to put my hand on her head to pray for her back, all of a sudden, that armor bearer standing over there is now standing behind that lady. I didn't even know how he got there. He just kind of disappeared and appeared over here. <laughs> Well, I prayed for that lady. She did not fall out, praise God, but she did get healed, and she's just so excited, jumping up and down. My back's healed, my back's healed, and I, couldn't, I didn't even know this. All of a sudden, I look back there, and he's standing there again. How did he do that? He kind of disappeared, appeared, disappeared, and appeared. He was attending to me. Don't take your eyes off the word. Too many Christians keep their eyes on the circumstance instead of the word. You violate the process. If you keep looking at your trial, your problem, your sickness, your situation, you have violated this process. And the process cannot work for you. So what have I got to do? I got to attend. Make it priority. Something going wrong in your life. What does the Word say? Sickness trying to get on you. What does the Word say? Uh-huh. There's an attack of the enemy. What does the Word say? Go straight to the Word. Attend to my Word. See, if we stay with the process, my brothers and sisters, we're going to get the results. But we have to make it a priority. Attend to the Word of God. Incline, it says here, attend to my Word. Incline to my sayings. Uh -huh. Incline, whatever God says, that's what I'm going to do. Incline to my sayings. In other words, you ought to be attending to the Word and listening. No, nah, you didn't get it. You ought to be reading the Word and listening. Let me say that again. You ought to be reading the Word and what? Listening. So what am I doing? I'm attending to the Word while I'm inclining to His voice. Oh, come on now. Because if you're reading the Word and listening for His voice and you say what He tells you to say, every trial, every problem, every situation has got to go because the works of the Father are about to be manifested. Amen. It's a process. Attend and incline. Attend and incline. Attend and what? Incline. Write that down, somebody. We're going to make this the title for tonight's message. Attend and incline. Last night's message was, who are you anyway? Tonight's message, God just told me that, is going to be attend and incline. Uh -huh. So what have I got to do? I've got to incline. Mm. I've got to listen. I've got to lean in that direction. What direction am I leaning in? Towards God. I'm leaning into him, into him. What are you saying, Lord? What are you saying, Lord? What are you saying? I'm going to read the word, but what are you saying, Lord? What are you saying? Incline. Uh-huh. Uh, you have to incline. You have to, uh, 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 you have to focus. You have to concentrate. You have to mm, listen. 
Brother Copeland shares this story, and, and the same thing happened to me. Uh, uh, when we were flying the plane that we had, uh, 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 you know, we, we would... Anybody ever done any flying before? I, I'm, I'm talking about pilot. Oh, several of you have as pilots, and you know what I'm talking about. So what would happen is that the tower, the different towers would talk to you. And you would hear the different... Uh, 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 messages that they were actually speaking to different planes. And you know what? It really didn't mean anything until they said, Triple Eight, Victor, Victor. And all of a sudden, I woke up. Why? Because my plane was Triple Eight, 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 Victor, Victor. So what happened? I heard all this noise, all these tower talking to, you know what I'm talking about? Talking to all these other planes, and it didn't mean a thing because I had my headset on. You know, I, I didn't fly the plane, but the pilot would let me sit on the right seat. Amen? So <laughs> we would fly home. I'd sit on the right seat having a great time. And so I would hear all this, and he said, he, my, the, the, the pilot said, pay no attention to anything you hear until you hear Triple Eight, Victor, Victor. And the moment we heard Triple Eight, Victor, Victor, I know, I know, they're talking to us. They're talking to our plane. We got to listen. And they would say, Triple Eight, Victor, Victor, do this or do that or go to this height or go to that height or turn this way or turn that way. They'd give us an instruction. And guess what? That wasn't the end of it. The pilot would say, this is Triple Eight, Victor, Victor. And he would repeat the instruction verbatim didn't add words didn't subtract words didn't make it longer didn't make it shorter had to say it identical <laughs> God is trying to get you to say something and he's going triple eight Victor Victor I want you to say A B C you're going to say, I am Trickolate Victor Victor, and I'm going to say A, B, C, and nothing else. Am I right? He's a traffic, he's traffic controller right over here. He'll tell you. That's exactly how this thing works. So you've got to be inclining to that call number, that name. Ooh. Vicky Schmidt called. Oh, oh, somebody call me. <laughs> Richard Stewart. Oh, God's, in, God's about to speak to me. Barrett. Oh, oh, God's going to say something to me. Inclined. What does that mean? You better turn in that direction. <laughs> Inclined. And when that call number comes, you better not only hear it, pay attention to it, but your job is to repeat it. God's not trying to get you to do anything. God's trying to get you to say something. Amen. Can I say that again? God wasn't trying to get Jesus to do something. He was trying to get, the Father was trying to get Jesus to say something. Why? Why has he got to say something? Because we live in a... Voice -activated system. Get a hold of this. I got seven albums that'll teach you on that. Once you get a hold of that, you'll never open your mouth and start saying the wrong stuff. Uh-uh. You control your words because your words control your world. It is that simple. Now, this process, as you're going to find out, uh, <laughs> works in the positive and the negative. Go ahead. Say what the devil is telling you to say. <laughs> 